So after watching anime for years, you have finally decided that you wouldn't mind having your very own maid, but sadly you don't know where to start. All of the emails you have sent to anime studios and Chinese officials simply aren't getting replies. Well, don't give up just yet, you can save that for after this tutorial. Although you could technically try to crowdfund your own anime, such as with how Under the Dog and Honor the Goro were made, the chances of being able to get people to fund your idea are very slim. Most anime are based off already published works, whether it be manga or light novels as they already have an established fan base, story world and many other aspects that make advertising and creating them easier. Therefore, the most realistic way for you to get your anime is for you to have a successful work to be adapted. Since manga are the most popular type of literature that gets made into anime and it is far more popular in general than light novels and visual novels, creating a manga is your best bet. But before we get to manga, you are first going to need to learn Japanese and preferably move to Japan. This is because it is going to be very difficult to publish manga if your Japanese vocab doesn't go past the words kawaii and desu. It is also very rare for a non-native author to have a manga published, with the only author I can think of being Mark Criley, an American who wrote and illustrated the manga Mickey Faults, and even that hasn't been adapted into an anime. Recently though, it has become slightly easier for foreigners to submit their works, as some publishers such as Shonen Jump have offered to translate other languages into Japanese. If you have the money, you could also just hire your own translator, but we are trying to maximize your chances though, so you should just learn Japanese. I will first say that I am no expert in Japanese, nor do I claim to speak the language, so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. Generally speaking, it is best to learn a language in a group setting or one where you are able to practice speaking with other people, so this means that attending nearby classes and or study groups would be the best advantage. If you are the type of person that doesn't like talking to other people face to face, then apps such as Hi Native and websites such as italki will allow you to talk and ask questions to actual Japanese people and tutors through your phone. If you are planning to self-study, there are obviously a lot of resources available to you, but based off its popularity and its acclaimed status, I recommend picking up the Genki book series which should be an effective way for you to start learning the language. Outside of this, I would also recommend checking out any of the following apps, which should help you memorize and learn vocabulary. The best way to learn a language though is to actually live in the culture, so once you think you have learned enough Japanese to keep yourself afloat, figure out how you are going to get to Japan so we're going to move to the next step. I will now assume that you have managed to learn Japanese. Good job mate, I have no clue how you learn Japanese in 3 seconds flat, but you did it. So now we can finally talk about how to create your best selling manga. Your drawing skills are as good as your Japanese news could be, which is to say, terrible. And your writing skills aren't good enough to carry a work on their own, so it looks like it's time to learn how to draw. As with most things in life, practice makes slightly better than average, but that is what we are aiming for. But if you need some help along the way, or don't know where to start, I recommend purchasing the aptly named How to Draw Manga book series, as from what I can tell from its positive reviews, it is probably worth your time. In terms of courses or classes you can take, there is no need to leave your home. Websites such as howtodrawmanga.com and japanmangaschool.com both offer online courses to help you improve your drawing skills. If you don't want to pay for courses, then you can always scavenge knowledge from the internet. Since we are on YouTube, I might as well recommend the aforementioned Mark Criley, who frequently posts instructional guides and tutorials on, as he says, every conceivable subject, but simply knowing how to draw isn't going to be enough if you want to be a manga cut. 85 by 11 sheets of paper and a number 2 pencil will only get you so far. If you are going to make it big, there are some of these tools that you should have in your arsenal. Varying different types of coloured pencils, graphite pencils, markers, pastels, charcoal, inking pens, light boxes, dojini paper, manuscript paper, erases, rulers, templates, compasses, a cutting board, a cutting knife, paper cement, white out, airbrushes, a drawing tablet and finally an illustration and graphic software. It would take far too long to explain the uses of all of these materials so I will link the website I found that lists all of these of what I talked about and more with an explanation for what each of of these materials are used for. So at this point, if you have decided that this sounds like too much work for you, then I would consider hiring an illustrator. You might still have to draw out your storyboard as well as other key elements of your story, but your drawings really only need to be detailed enough to get your ideas across. And most of your work with the illustrator will be explained through your notes and direct communication anyway. 
The internet is your best friend when looking for an illustrator. The websites such as Fastmonga will allow you to research artists, look at their work and see if they would be suitable for the type of work you are creating. But I am getting ahead of myself as we haven't even discussed what type of work you are making. In fact, you haven't even thought about it. I obviously cannot create your story for you, but I can offer you some tips to create your new and original story. A good place to start is determining what genre you want your story to be, whether it be romance, action, mystery, horror and any of the other categories. Choosing a genre you are familiar with will help narrow down what story you are trying to sell. Once you have decided on a genre, you should research, watch and read as many works as you can from that genre. Identify what parts of the stories you like and dislike, as well as what other people think about them. If applicable, consider allowing your own personal experiences to influence the story you are trying to tell as it is easier to imagine a scenario if it's based off something you have already went through. Now that you have the general idea of what type of story you want to tell, it is time to brainstorm your characters. Coming up with characters is very similar to coming up with your story, in that you're drawing from other people's works, personal experiences and preferences to creating characters that feel real and authentic. To get a better grasp of the characters in your story, try placing them in many different situations to see how they would react and identify what types of hobbies they might have. The more you can imagine your character as actual people, the better. After you have done all of this, you will be on your way to creating an unsuccessful manga. Because didn't I tell you, we are trying to create manga that is popular enough for it to be turned into an anime. Brainstorming not only takes forever, but originality is the last thing you want in your story. If you are going to make it big, all you should be focused on is popularity, so determining your genre is now extremely easy you'll be making a shonen battle manga. Outside of that, the story doesn't really matter too much, just colour swap some designs from popular pre-existing characters and keep your story streamlined and easy to understand. It also doesn't hurt to throw in their occasional boob or panty shot, and by it doesn't hurt I mean you should make it a goal to average 5-10 to 10 fan service shots a chapter. We need something to keep the audience entertained in between the action scenes and that definitely isn't going to be the story. This also makes storyboarding your manga fairly easy. You can just follow this simple template. Number 1. Cast of characters are having a peaceful carefree time. Number 2. Cast of characters encounter a bad guy that is trying to ruin their day. Number 3. Cast of characters initially lose to the bad guy because they aren't strong enough. Number 4. Training montage. Number 5. The power of friendship and hard work saves the day. Number 6. Rinse and repeat. So now you know the story you want to create, and you have all the pieces to do so, but how are you going to get your work published? And more importantly, how will it be made into an anime? I will answer these questions and more on the next episode of Anime Balls Deep. So if you want to see the riveting conclusion to this video, head over to my channel right here, and find out the secrets that the anime industry doesn't want you knowing about. I'm waiting. I know you want to click it. I mean, I don't have anything better to do.